Thank you for tuning in to RTM Nation Online, where we believe that you will receive the abundance of peace, prosperity, security, stability, health, healing, and truth. If you would like to learn more about the ministry, click the link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into the message. So, I mean, I, I'm sitting here, I'm like, okay, God, I'm, I'm sitting up there, okay, God, is that what you want me to do? Is that how you want me to start this? Because you already know I had a game plan. <laughs> Came up here to, to, to just jump right in and get started because I'm so excited about what God has here for us. But I do want to, I want to say this before we get started. Um, and we are tonight, we're going to keep pounding on that same rock of understanding and putting Jesus as the source of our faith. Yeah. And for a lot of people, it may sound cool, it may feel cool and, and all those different types of things, but how do you guys know everything that we preach is something that is real, something that is authentic? I mean, we're not just deciding that, man, this will sound good and this sounds fresh, but these are things that God has shown us a lot of times by, by stuff we live through <laughs> and saying, okay, God, what, what was that? And what, what do I need to adjust about understanding you and how you operate so that I can be in position next time to not be there? And so when you talk about, and I was talking to my mom about it, and I'm trying to be as, try to get through it out crying on y'all, but I was talking to my mom about it earlier today um, of when this message became really alive to me. And it came alive to me because you have to understand, I, I did. I grew up in the church and I'm not exaggerating. And some of y'all might say, man, that's interesting, but I'm saying it to, to give you an example. But I mean, I, I tell you, I say probably, I don't know, it's high. Probably 90% of everything that my father taught, my mother taught, I did it. 90%. I, I could really, I would really challenge anybody else to say that they, they did more of what he taught than I did. I would say, bring it to me. Like, bring me your grade sheet. Because I'm pretty sure I executed on levels that just exceed all exception. And as a result, I mean, there was so many things that my life has, has always been a dream. And I credit that to a result, and I, and I always credit that to a result of, man, just being obedient, just listening. I know y'all rolling with me now, but it takes a sharp turn. <laughs> it truly does. And, and, and that sharp turn is a turn I don't want to see any of you guys ever have to go through. And so as a result, you know, I'm, I'm, I am the epitome, you know, understand what I'm saying, of saying that works equals blessings. Like, I'm the epitome of it. You know, you look at my life and you can say, you can, you can work your way into receiving from God. And Brian is a great example of that happening. Like, that was me. That was the selling card, the postcard of my life, that God will do things for you. God will show up in your life because you can do things that make him do it. Y'all keep following me. Just keep listening. Until one day, and many of you guys know, know the story, one day something occurred in my life that I couldn't control and I couldn't do anything about, but just accept it. It had happened. I couldn't reverse it. I couldn't change it. I couldn't do anything about it. And many of you guys know that was the day I found out that we had lost our first child. And I sat there in a place trying to figure out where I went wrong. Because I had done everything right. So God, where, where did I mess up? God, where did, where did I fail? God, what didn't I do that I was supposed to do to, to, 
to, for this not to happen to me. This is not supposed to happen to me. I'm the 90%. I'm the person that does everything that you said to do the way you said to do it. And because I did that, these types of things aren't supposed to happen in my life. They're not supposed to happen to me. I, I have done all that you require, but yet, why is this happening to me? And I started to beat myself up, started to condemn myself, started to see myself as the problem. Like, there, there has to be something wrong with me. But here's the problem. I'm looking back, and I'm like, God, I just, I just, I mean, do you, do you want me? Did I not pray enough? Was that it? But man, I, God, I pray all the time. I pray more than the people that's walking around here with kids they don't even want. God, I've never stopped giving. I've been giving all my life. God, I've never stopped serving. I've been serving all my life. I've done every fast. I wasn't like those cheaters on the fast. I ain't drunk nothing. I ain't smoked nothing. I mean, I got, I am. Hope you guys are getting the picture now. Of the amount of weight, the amount of condemnation, the amount of shame, the amount of self-guilt that can be passed on us. If we believe that it's our works that produce his goodness. And I'm trying to tell you the, the, the place I was was so dark. I felt absolutely hopeless because I believed, I truly believed that God does things based on what I do. And since I couldn't find where I had went wrong, you know where that left me? It left me hopeless, hopeless. And I'm saying this, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm sharing this with you to say, let me foreshadow this thing for you. Satan is trying to tell you that there's something you've been doing, something you've been lacking, something you've been missing is the reason why God hasn't shown up in your life. And if you would just do better, God will show up. I'm here telling you as a 90 percenter, That everything that you have in your mind that you think that you need to do, that Satan is telling you, and I said that specifically, that Satan is telling you that you need to do in order to receive from God, understand that it's all a lie. You can work this thing as hard as you want to work this thing. You can choose to do that. And then the work will just keep stacking up. It'll keep stacking on you to the point where you get hopeless. And I remember sitting in the parking lot after walking out. And I, I really, for, and I'm telling y'all the truth, and I'm telling you this because this is why we're preaching this. This is why we're saying this. I'm sitting in the parking lot, and for about two and a half minutes of my life, I said, man, there just, there just must not be no God. Because how could a God say that he loved me and I've done so much for him, do something like this to me? How could I end up in this spot? If I ended up in this spot, there ain't much hope from nobody else I know. And how can I share with people that God is good if I don't feel like he's been good to me? And y'all know what got me? God said, well, Brian, 
And this is just simply how he said it. He said, if you don't have a hope in me anymore, what are you going to tell your wife? What is the answer for your wife if you don't have any hope left in what I can do? I said, well, only thing I could tell her, if, if, if this is the, the, the crossroad of me just not believing anymore, the only thing I could tell her is, well, the dream you had, the dream I had, the, the, the vision we had, the, the belief we had that we would have a child, let's just throw it all away. It's not for us. How I many you guys know, not only would that have crushed her, but that would have crushed me to accept the reality where there is no hope. And Jesus spoke to me again. He said, Brian, tell me what? Tell me this. Will you serve me still? Will you love me still? Despite if I do something for you or if I don't. Will you still love me? Because I still love you. Whether or not you do what's right or you do what's wrong. I said, God, you know what? For this day forward, I will love you, I will serve you, and I will commit to what you're telling me to do and what you called me to do simply because you love me. And I love you. And I will no longer wear the weight of my actions somehow playing a role in what you do for me. Because that road just ends in darkness. And God, I put my trust in you. I put my hope in you. I put my faith in you. I put my belief in you. That when it's time for us to have our child, you'll bring her. You'll bring her. But until that day, I will serve you. I will love. I will give. And I will just do all I can to advance your kingdom simply because you love me. That's grace. It's the undeserved. It's unmerited. Did our child show up next, the next month? No. It was a year or so later. year later. I walked around here, and I, I, I laugh. I told the staff a lot about it, and they looked at me. You couldn't tell there was a thing going on in my world. Why? Because I had, I had cast every care. I'm, I'm not going to wear the weight. I'm not going to wear a performance title. Just not going to do it anymore. Because you don't do it to me. Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's mutual. God saying, I love you. I care for you. And I have so many things planned for your life. Simply because I love you. And despite of what you may do right, or do wrong, it doesn't change my heart or perception for you. But many of us don't look back at him the same way. But it's time. And just say, you know what? Our faith, our trust, our confidence, our belief, it lies in Jesus. He's the source of our faith. He's the author. He's the finisher, giving us the first right to believe. And I no longer wear the mindsets, wear the, the understandings that I know we've all heard. I was a, a product of all of what we heard that said there are things that we have to do 
to cause God to move on our behalf. And it's simply not true. But simply, we're only asked to do one thing. Believe. Just keep believing. And love and serve him. Care for his people. Follow after his calling. As if it's already done. So I just wanted to share with you guys the, call it what you want to call it, the motivation, the fire, the zeal, whatever word or adjective you want to pull up behind why this is so important to me. That none of you, whether you're sitting here or listening online, fall into that same trap that Satan tried to set me up in having me to believe that it's all on me to wear the burden of fulfilling all that God has for my life. Don't wear that burden. Take that thing off. (laughs) Throw it to the side. Just cast it. Cast every care. Let him have it. Walk in peace. Walk in joy, expecting his manifested glory to show up any moment. Any moment. Amen. Amen. Is they all ready to keep pounding this rock? <laughs> Did I pray yet? Oh, grab hands with the person next to you. (laughs) Lord God, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity to sit in your presence and hear from you. Lord God, I just pray that we're all the better as a result of being here and hearing what you have to say to us. Lord God, I pray that you reach every single person right where they are, speaking directly to the situations that are in their lives and pray that you bring healing, restoration, and peace to them that passes all understanding, knowing that you are with them wherever they may go and you have not lost track of even the smallest things concerning their life, but you have it all finished, all done, all taken care of, it's all paid for, and the only thing we have to do is believe and put our trust in you, looking only at you as our Lord and our personal Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 So hug a few people, tell them you love them. So now y'all know the rest of the story. Pastor Brian doesn't want to see us lose our faith in Christ. That's the setup. It's the setup. It's the setup. Man, God, and I said, God, I just, you know, and I I said, God, you know what? I, I submit all that I had to go through so that I'm able to, with clear understanding, deliver what you have to say. If I had to go through what I went through in order so that I could understand what it feels like, then it was all worth it. <laughs> but I tell people all the time, I said, you know what, and for those of y'all that, that, you know, this is my little saying, you know, take it if you want it. But I, I tell people all the time, I said, you know what, I paid way too much not to talk about it. And a lot of you guys have some powerful testimonies and stories that you've been through that you're just holding hostage. And, and you should, let me tell you something, you pay way too much not to talk about it. I went through way too much not to tell people that, hey, look, don't do that. <laughs> it will not end how you think it's going to end. 
You subscribing to the belief that your works cause God to move on your behalf will end up in you feeling so condemned, so let down, so just 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 bottled up with, with just confusion and loss and doubt that you'll start to even question if God exists. That's what it will do to you. Let me take you all the way to the end. And so just in case you're hearing some people that still they're out there telling people that there's things that you that you have to do. Things that are required of you. To get God to move on your behalf, let me just fast forward that tape and tell you where that puts you. It puts you in so much condemnation that you're unable to bear the weight that you may even consider just giving up on it all. Because if it's this hard, I just don't want it. How many of you guys know that's a, that's, a, that's a mindset that we can get to? If, if it's, you know, if, if this Jesus, now understand what I'm saying? If this, if this Jesus stuff is that hard, Man, I, I, I might not could do it. I'll accept my ticket to heaven, but y'all can have this earth stuff. <laughs> if it's this hard. That's where it puts people. That's where it ends them up at. It's just getting weight after weight after weight after weight. And you're trying to figure out why is the church not as full as it once was? It got so heavy up in here, people couldn't wear it no more. So they just punched their salvation ticket and said, I'll leave the rest of this for whatever. What happens? What happens? But not up at Revealing Truth Ministries. We about to put on our freedom songs, our freedom clothes, our freedom dancing, our freedom music, our freedom talk, our freedom walk. And watch people start to gravitate as they feel the presence of God, his love, his kindness, his joy, his peace, his, his longs. As they start to feel that, that's what attracts them. Y'all know, y'all know my favorite saying right now. Grace has taken hold of my faith and done what? <laughs> Dipped it, submerged it in the blood of Jesus. And I'm a, I really just came in here just to, I love Wednesday nights. <laughs> and I don't know, I, we may just confess this stuff. We may just, I don't know what we're going to do with this. But we also, we, what we're going to do is let God lead us. I know that much. But I'm going to go to Hebrews 12 and 2. I'm going to go back here. Y'all there? I'm reading the Amplified Version. It says, looking away from all that will distract to who? Y'all ain't there yet? It's on the... <laughs> Looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief. And it's also it's bringing it to maturity and perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, did what? Endured the cross despising and ignoring the shame and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And so what are we taking from this? And this is, I just want y'all to say this with, with me, all right? It's a list of it. This is what we're receiving from this scripture here. Jesus is the author of my faith. Jesus is the finisher of my faith. Jesus is the source of my faith. Jesus gave me me the first incentive to believe. believe. It is his blood blood that gives my covenant with God God. power 
power. power. It, is his blood it is his blood that keeps my covenant with God, covenant with God. Intact. intact. Just Jesus. Hallelujah. Just Jesus. Just Jesus. Not Brian Poe. Just Jesus. Yo, that, that just takes so much weight off. Just Jesus. And I am to look away from all, all that will distract from just Jesus. So I'm tearing down old mindsets. I'm destroying all shame and guilt. I'm receiving my grace. I'm walking in my righteousness. And I'm choosing to look away from all that will distract from Jesus as my source. That's my confession. I'm tearing down old mindsets. I'm destroying all shame and guilt. I'm receiving my grace. I'm walking in my righteousness. And I'm choosing to look away. I'm choosing. To look away from all that will distract from Jesus as my source. That's what I like to say. I have a new position. See, I have a new position. I have a clear view of my source. And it's Jesus. I just, I, just, I just left all that somewhere over there. And I just moved right on over here. So I can get a clear view of, clear view of Jesus as my source. Clear view. Just some more confessions. Here we go. I'm going to call them confessions since y'all confessing. <laughs> My faith is covered in the finished works of Jesus. My faith is standing on the finished works of Jesus. And my faith is sourced by the finished works of Jesus. What does that mean? When that transition took place, when God showed me, said, Brian, when that transition takes place, that's when you have truly connected with a source that will never let you go. When I say, I know Jesus can heal me, because Jesus has healed. I'm not talking about circumstances. I'm talking about facts based on the word of God. How solid is my foundation when it's all sourced by facts? Oh, you hear what I'm saying? That's what transitioning the work, the, the, the works part of your faith. That's what transitioning it over to Christ does. It gives me certifiable proof of everything I need to believe God for. Because everything I need to believe God for, Jesus already finished it. And so I told y'all what I said. I said, faith, I said, fear has no chance against the faith I have in my Savior. I said, we said it right. We just ain't finish it. <laughs> There's a lot of chance in some of y'all life because y'all been fearful. And you'd be like, well, you know, a couple times I stood strong, but a couple times I fell. So I'm going to believe this is one of those good times. <laughs> and I'm going to be able to stand strong through this test. Yeah, if you're doing it within yourself. But if you understand, and this is what we're getting to, if you understand that Christ where do we live now? On the corner of Galatians 2 and 20. If I fully understand that Christ has taken up residence on the inside of me and the power that he had, I now possess. Then what I just need to do is make sure I'm sourcing the right power when it's time to stand on what I'm believing. I tell him, I said, you know, 
it's funny because power is is there's there's you know a lot of things can go wrong in your house, right? But there's certain things you don't touch if they go wrong. The main thing that if it goes wrong, you don't touch is what? Your power. Your testing of the source of the power that comes to your house only goes so far. And the same rings true both spiritually and naturally. You don't touch the source of the power. The power is Jesus. The same way you wouldn't walk out your house, climb up the pole, and test to see if the power, if the lights go out in your house, you are going to call Tico. They, sl they supply the power. At no point are you going to enter into works of your own to try to fix the power. Y'all see where I'm going? Why? No, I'm not climbing up on no pole. I'm not putting no stick next to it. If they, if they say it's off, it's off. But what I will not do is go to that green box in my front yard, try to lift it up and try to fix it. No, if the source says it's good, the power is good. And I don't try to fix power problems. Oh. But for some reason. God says Jesus is the source of your power. And we think it's. Our job to get to work when the power ain't flowing. Let me tell you something. We don't touch it in the natural, and we don't touch it in the spiritual. The power is good. Power is good. The power is good. The power is good. Next time somebody tell you, you know, you got you to gotta do something to get that power flowing in your life. You say, look, we don't touch power. <laughs> we just trust the source. I just call up Tico and say, is my block good? Your block is good. Thank you, sir. So, look, Christ, you in me, I'm in you. Power's good. <sighs> now, nah, you sure you don't need to, 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 to just, I'm going to go ahead and go there. Forget it. It's radical, this is a radical series. I'm just going to say it. Ooh, I'm going to say it, Jesus. Ooh, I'm going to say it, Jesus. Boy, I've been waiting to say this. My mama gave me permission this morning to say it. I verified it with her. One thing that just been getting on my nerves while I just been just praying and reading is how we were taught, we were told. That the reason why the power in your life isn't turned out the way it should is because you ain't exercised it enough. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hold up. I ain't exercised it enough. So you're telling me in order for the power of God to work in my life, I have to first believe God for a parking space. Then after I get him for a parking space, I can move up to, uh, 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 I don't know, a pair of shoes. And after I get to a pair of shoes, then I could believe them for like a, I don't know, a whole outfit. And after I get past a whole outfit, I could believe them for a dinner. And after I believe them for a dinner, I could believe them, I'll make a big joke, I could believe them for a car. And after I believe them for a car, I could believe them for a house. And after I believe them for a house, I may just be able to believe him for healing. Y'all hear all that? Wait. When I read all through the Bible, people in all different states of life was able to walk up to the source, which was Jesus. And regardless of wherever they were, all they had to do was believe in him and they were set free immediately. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to take that thing and I'm... Exercise your faith. Don't tell me exercise my faith. My faith is strong. Amen. It's strong because it's sourced by Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You telling me to exercise my faith is switching the source. 
It's, it's, it's now saying that there is things I have to work in order to obtain the power that was freely given to me. That's what you're saying when you're telling me I have to exercise my faith. All right, I said it. <laughs> Zechariah tells us it's not by our power, it's not by our strength, but it's by his spirit. Boy, I wanted to turn on Ron Canola and just have an old school jam session. Y'all know the song I'm talking about, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by his spirit. I said, we ain't been that far off. <laughs> Go to 1 Corinthians 15 and... 57. I don't cause enough trouble. Let me stop. <laughs> but sometimes you got to understand. It's, I'm glad God, you know, I told y'all the piece of what happened in my life. So y'all can understand why I'm so serious about this. Amen. It ain't play. It's just just people's people's belief in Christ is on the line. Yeah. And if you're telling them that somehow they have to wear the weight of this, I'm going to tell you how they end up. They end up just walking away. They're tired of jumping through your religious hula hoops. They don't want to do it no more. When they read through their Bible and they see people who just, because they just believe they receive. Y'all ready? I'm reading Amplified, Amplified Version. It says, but thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God <laughs> who does what? Who gives us victory, making us conquerors through what? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Who gives us victory? God gives us victory. How does he give it? Through Christ. But what do we know about Christ? We know Christ has taken up residence on the end side of us. Go to Galatians 2 and 20. For those of y'all that ain't read it yet. <laughs> Say, I have victory in Christ. <sighs> I just got to believe he in there. <sighs> y'all there? And it says, I have been crucified with Christ. In him I have shared in his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ, the Messiah, lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith. So the, the, the faith is, is my belief that Christ is in here and I'm living in this new body. That is the faith that is required. Faith that you believe that this is a new body in Christ resides in. In it, you have to live in it by faith. You have to believe it. I don't have to believe that my works equal up to the power being available in my life. I have to believe and have faith that Christ is truly taking residence on the inside of me. That's it. Once I believe that, getting ahead of myself again. And have adherence to and reliance on complete trust in the son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. And I just love y'all know I love talking about how, how Jesus gave himself for us. That is, that is just, you know, that's just not a light thing. It's just not. But I can't go that. I can't go down that trail. So Christ is taking up residence on the inside of me. But let's go to Ephesians one and three. Because God has made every provision for everything that pertains to your life. It's already done. When Christ moved up inside of you, he brought some friends. Y'all ready? I'm reading the King James Version. And it says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who did what? Have blessed us. Who blessed us? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What he blessed us with? All spiritual blessings 
in heavenly places in what? In Christ. That's position. All my spiritual blessings have been bestowed upon me with me being where? In Christ. Not me being in myself. And definitely not me being in you. Well, you know, that thing worked out good for Deacon Alvin. Because that thing worked out good for Deacon Alvin, that thing going to work out good for me. That's me living in him. I love to hear your testimony. I'm encouraged by your testimony. But your testimony fires me up to learn more about the one that has moved on in the inside of me. Because if the man that moved on the inside of you can take you from where you were to where you are now, I don't want to know your story. I want to know the story about the man who did it. Oh, man, this thing is so this thing is so good. It's so just full of so much. Bless. Bless is empowered to prosper. So I've been who have empowered me to prosper with all spiritual blessings. The thing about the word have is have is past tense. It's already done. He he rolled up and came a part of your life. And a part of what he brought was all spiritual blessings. He ain't going to do it. That word is past tense. He did it when he showed up. So where are my spiritual blessings? In Christ. And that's why my faith is in Christ. My faith is in the acknowledgement and my belief, my, my, my unwavering belief that he has taken up residence on the inside of me and brought all spiritual blessings with him. Everything, everything we see, everything that God does starts off in the spirit realm. Starts off in the spirit realm. So he blessed you with the root to produce whatever it is you need to see in the natural. Bless you with the root. I told you guys before, man, the most beautiful thing about how the Holy Spirit works and operates in our lives is he has the ability to give us customized blessings. Stuff that's never been seen before. Stuff that's never been heard about before. He has the ability, ability to do first time things in your life. And that's why God gave you the root to it all. <laughs> and I just love this just to finish this train. Uh, this will help people later when they're listening to it or if they're writing it down. But I just walked through a whole train. I'm going to say it so you can hear the sequence. But spiritual blessings are in heavenly places. Heavenly places are in Christ. And Christ is in me. So keeping my heart focused on Christ, who lives in me, gives me dual citizenship in the spirit. <sighs> say it again. Spiritual blessings are in heavenly places. I'm just summing up all those scriptures we just read. When you go back and read them, you can see it. Just, just jot down for you. But spiritual blessings are in heavenly places. Heavenly places are in Christ, and Christ is in me. So keeping my heart focused on Christ who lives in me gives my spirit dual citizenship. It's how it works. It's how it all connects together. Let's go to Philemon 1 and 6. I'm reading the King James Version. We almost done. We actually are. This is going to set your heart, your spirit on fire. Y 
Y'all ready? Y'all read it with me. Let's, we've been having, we've been doing all right with this whole read together thing, right? <laughs> That's fine. So, it says that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. What does effectual mean? Take effect. The communication of my faith causes everything to take effect in my life in Christ. Some people are like, man, I, that sounds very simple. I'm reading to the Amplified Version. It just gets even a little simpler. Amen. And it says, and I, and I pray that the participation in and sharing of your faith may produce and promote full recognition and appreciation and understanding and precise knowledge of every good thing that is ours in our identification with who? Christ Jesus unto his glory. We, by the acknowledging of who Christ is in our life, bring effect to everything that his life was caused to bring in ours. People like, man, that, that just boiled down a little too simple. I told you there was no work involved besides your faith in who Christ is. And then your steadfast, unwavering belief that he still is and that he is going to be and that he has already done and that he will do. And that it is finished. It's amazing. And that's why we're going to keep pounding this rock. Because I can sit here and feel in the spirit that some of y'all are still saying, there's got to be more. But there's not. There's not. Just that. I choose to believe. I choose to believe. Oh, uh, yeah, man. I told y'all in, as I started. Still pray. Cause I love to give because I'm thankful serve because it's my heart to I love on people do all I can for everybody that God's telling me to follow his guidance listen to his instructions because I choose Love me, so I love him. <clears throat> Let's go to Romans 5 and 2. Y'all there? And it says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice, rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And that's what we do. 
we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God showing and being evident in all that we do. Amen. Amen. Well, I just pray that God was able to minister, continue to minister uh, the peace that truly passes all understanding when you fully take that weight off of yourself. When you, when you look at the, the weights that we <laughs> were trained and taught to carry. And many other times we, we actually carried them because, you know, we, in a sense, we were like, okay, God, if, if, if I just got to do all this for you to, to show yourself in my life, then I'm willing to wear it. I'm willing to do it. It sounds like a good plan. Sounds like a good package. All the way up until something you've been standing for doesn't come to flourishing. And then you're left sitting there, evaluating yourself, condemning yourself, feeling guilty, trying to, trying to figure out where you went wrong. The reason why God didn't show up. And so we're just not going to go down that trail. We're just not even going to start it. The moment we see it showing up, the moment we see works or, or, or our self-effort or, or whatever else that is tied to God showing up in our lives or God manifesting himself in our lives, we say, hold up. God's going to do for me because he loves me. What else you got? No. He loves me. I'm his child. He's taking up resonance on the inside of me. And he's giving me power. Power to command all spiritual blessings to come alive. So my wisdom is coming alive. My healing, it's coming alive. My restoration, it's coming alive. My provision is coming alive. My peace is coming alive. My joy is coming alive. Why? Because I believe. I believe. I believe I have a savior. Just, just. It's just so much, it just means so much more to me, even now when I say that. Our Lord and Savior. Man, if he's doing the saving, let him do it. <laughs> and something else that I just love that uh, my mom always always told us and it just was it just always stopped me dead in my tracks she would say brian do you really believe god's mismanaging your life <coughs> well no mama <laughs> i don't believe the creator of heaven and earth is mismanaging my life then if you don't believe he's mismanaging your life, continue to put your trust in him. That he will do what needs to be done when it needs to be done. Amen. Amen. Well, I pray that you enjoyed yourselves tonight. I just love coming and, 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 and I appreciate and I thank God for every opportunity to share his word with you. And I pray that every time that something life changing occurs as a result. I love you guys. We gonna, we gonna set this thing ablaze in our city.
people are going to start flooding in from the north, the south, the east, and the west to hear about a savior. Like I like to say, that holds on, never lets go. It brings freedom and liberty. Amen. We pray that today's message was a blessing to you. If you would like to help us further expand the vision, simply text the word Give RTM to the number 41444 or visit us online at www.revealingtruth.org. Now remember, Jesus loves you. <laughs>